you know, as we talked through our previous session, we talked about communication and, you know, part of communication is, is obviously communicating with stakeholders. Um, and so now we're really going to talk about engaging stakeholders and how to, to manage that engagement throughout your project. So, you know, we want to make sure that we're keeping them interested, our stakeholders, in the project outcomes. And um, so we need to make sure that we understand our stakeholder knowledge and expertise, you know, because that's going to be one of the main things that can have a, a big impact on our project. You know, the, the knowledge and expertise of our stakeholders is really going to tell us or help, you know, help kind of drive some of the success or even the, the non-success of the project. So... We want to make sure we know who our stakeholders are, what their level of interest is, and then also be able to keep them interested and engaged as we go throughout the project. Um, hey, Karen. Welcome. Are you able to hear me? Anyway, um, <clears throat> all right, so we've got a few uh, topics that are specific you know, enablers that go with our exam content outline. So what we're going to look at is analyzing and categorizing stakeholders and their interests and then engaging them by that category and then also developing and executing and, and validating a strategy for their engagement. So we have a few deliverables here and also some tools that we're going to be talking about. So we have a stakeholder register. And that's going to involve creating that and also updating it. And then we do have a stakeholder engagement plan as well. So making sure that we're talking about how we're going to keep them engaged and, you know, what that's going to look like throughout the project. And then also going through and assessing any work performance information. So the tools that we'll use to do this, you know, expert judgment is pretty much always going to be a tool. You're also going to want to look at organizational process assets. You're going to look do meetings, and also you can have a power and influence, power influence versus impact grid, and we'll look at what that is. Interpersonal skills, management skills, all of that is going to be in there, and then also updating our stakeholder register. So there are several categories or types of stakeholders on a project. Um, so you can see the list here, we have sponsors. Um, so those are going to be typically the, you know, whether it's an individual or a group that's going to provide financial assistance and resources for the project. And they're basically the ones that are going to authorize the project, typically by signing that project charter. Uh, you also have customers and users. They're the ones that are going to approve your project's deliverables. You have sellers. Uh, they're going to provide the components or the services for the project. So you can have those when we talked about in the procurements. You know, if you have a particular seller or vendor, they may um, provide some components for you. You can have other business partners. So maybe these are special business relationships or even just, you know, they're performing um, organization. You might have training or support, things like that. They're going to be part of your, your business partners. Uh, organizational groups, so internal stakeholders that would be affected by the project would be in this category, so things like your legal, your finance, or even operations departments. You're going to have functional managers. Um, you know, those are the ones that are probably going to be managing some of the resources that you'd be working with. Um, and then also you would have you can have other stakeholders, you know, people that contribute to or have an interest in the deliverables. Could be a government regulator, consultant, or even a financial institution.